So how can you enjoy your summer holidays as a photographer and your nearest and dearest enjoy those holidays too? I've been chatting with David Clapp um, about this and we got some great advice from David um, in a previous episode we've done. Anyone who hasn't seen that, just pop over to the link somewhere near this video and you'll get to hear some of his tips. And what we're going to be doing today is Dave is going to be sharing some of his shots. And these are the shots he's used his own advice. So it'll be great to get a real feel for, for his advice in action. How are you doing, David? Yeah, oh, great. Thanks very much. Yeah, yeah I've good. got a, a range of different pictures to show you today, simply because of the fact being, I think that whenever we're traveling, we have a number of different genres that we'll sort of flit in and out of. I mean, one is recording our holiday, as in like our you know, family and uh, you know, um, excursions and things that we do. Uh, the other is, of course, the subject matters that are presented to us. And most of those are categorized in different ways. And the first one I would say is uh, either going to be a landscape or the other one is going to be some level of architecture. Because normally we travel to cities or we travel to towns or we go to places, for example, like let's take um, coastal areas or things like that, where it's a combination of landscape, seascapes, and of course, architecture as well. So I've got a whole load of stuff to show you from all different parts of trips that I've been on and things that I've been doing. Lovely. And um, just before we so go on, the... on to that, as well, as well as you doing your holidays, you know, obviously with, you know, with family, um, you also are a travel photographer. So you have spent, was it 15 years doing travel photography? 15 years. It Crazy. is, yeah, 15 years. And you're, I think you're so up to Jordan, me... aren't you, in, the, in a few weeks' time? A few months. <laughs> I am, yeah. I'm yeah. off to Jordan um, in October, but before that, uh, I've also got to, I've got a Namibia trip, which is in Brilliant. September, which is, <laughs> that's a lot of work to organise, believe me. That's more than any family holiday, I could tell yeah. you. <laughs> well, uh, okay, you know, so is... um, have a look. At... No, go on, go on. Have a look at this. Uh, this is a selection of uh, pictures. I, I Again, I chose some of the most travel orientated things I could find. This is uh, some work I did in, in Croatia, Dubrovnik. And I'm, I'm always just wandering around trying to find really nice travel images. I mean, this is like a James Bond style moment with a boat, you know, like a, a classic mm. sort of almost Venetian boat you can see there with a mm. guy with a shirt and tie uh, holding the, uh, the bow rope. It's, it's a really um, strange moment to find in Dubrovnik, but it gives you a really good idea because you've got lots of terracotta and you've got lots of um, domed roofs. So I'll wander around harbours and places like that just trying to find things. Again, polarizer really saturating everything as i mentioned in my last part with the it's really important to get some really rich colors in there uh, so don't be afraid of things like saturation and that side bit as well now um i'll just take you through the ones that i've got in in dubrovnik to give you an idea of some of the flow so this is actually taken really high up on the outskirts of dubrovnik looking at a small island which is directly opposite the main harbor and i mean beautiful to get this uh this fantastic clipper just going around the front of it, as you can see there. It's just taken in early morning, from what I remember. And, you know, not uh, dawn or, um, you know, low light dusk or anything like that. It's just taken uh, probably about an hour and a half after sunrise. And mm -hmm. it really does get that holiday vibe going. I mean, that boat is such a, a, a beautiful focal point within the picture. Mm -hmm. But look at all the space I've left around it as well, because it gives you that feeling that this really is uh, an exclusive little island. For example and this is actually a stitch panorama i yeah, did this to make a, a large high quality image out of this but um you know i just took a standard tripod and just sliced it into vertical strips and put it all together because it's uh, uh it really does have that wonderful island vibe to it hmm. so um this is another island called Cortula, which is uh on the um again probably off off the main um the main coastline but not very far away you can get there by ferry and the, i thought that this really worked as a wonderful sort of exclusive island feel and i had to walk up a set of roads to see if i could get some elevation away from the the small harbor but mm. the the sort of like super yacht cruiser thing on the left hand side really sort of makes it feel very exclusive and very enjoyable and you can also see from the from the time of day that it it, it looks wonderfully uh, orange and uh, it was just around that sunset point so um I, what what it doesn't tell you because you're thinking warmth and 
you know, stillness. It was really windy. <laughs> it was windy. <laughs> it felt cold in shorts and just a T-shirt, believe me, even though it was August in Dubrovnik. So sometimes you think, you know, things are a certain way, but they're, they're certainly not. And I remember thinking how, you know, I wish I'd brought another, like a hoodie top or something with me at the time. <laughs> now, this is me using my wife in an opportunist way. Uh, she's often placed in pictures with her blonde hair because of the fact being that it's um, it sort of sells imagery for me. So I actually use her in photographs as a, as a model, which is great fun to do. And <laughs> the, the thing is, is that uh, you're probably thinking, well, why can't I see her face? And it's actually because when I took this, it was at the time where if you couldn't recognize somebody by their face and the stock libraries were completely fine with that. So there's lots of images of the back of Rachel's head, believe it or not, that I've got in my library. But what I'm trying to say is, is why not use members of your family to actually enhance photographs at the same time or take high quality photographs, posed photographs of members of your family? There's nothing wrong with that. Just think of, that, of the amount of influencers there are running around and TikTokers and all that nonsense. Well, you're actually taking a high quality photograph of your family or of your uh, wife being used, wife, husband, whatever, being used in a specific setting to create mm. a feeling that's uh, a more memorable, more higher quality uh, holiday image that perhaps you wouldn't do in in a, in a normal circumstance. It's very true. I think you think about you know when people are, especially using using the phones to take photos and come back from a holiday and they literally have hundreds and hundreds of photos on their phone and actually this goes back to your point earlier on about um about being focused in what you're going to be you know shooting is is you're going to have far less to go through if you're a lot more focused and yeah focus more on quality absolutely and the, the thing is, is is that if you make sure that you know if you see an opportunity and you take it and you know uh, it's it's it can be used to such an advantage. You get a lovely holiday photograph. I mean, she, there's other ones where she turned around and faced the camera, and those are the ones that you know we've got that are uh, our holiday. But mm. I used that one, for example, as a business shot because it meant that I could sort of sell, you know, a relaxed evening by the water's edge uh, in Croatia, for example. Yeah, nice. And it's also really generic, for example, with this um, particular picture. It doesn't look, you know, it could be anywhere. It could be Torbay Seafront. You wouldn't really know. Um, it could be, uh, obviously, um, a completely foreign country. But the main thing is, is that also if you if um, I, you know, Rachel likes to uh, dress pretty smartly when she goes out. And uh, I use that to my advantage as well, because the, 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 not only can I use those photographs for uh, stock photography or things like that, or I, I used to use them, I would say, um, because that that era is, is sadly reduced a lot now. But the. Um, the main thing is, is that it's actually nicer when you actually wear nice clothes and you have photographs of each other and you're you're wearing like she's wearing a nice summer dress there rather than, mm. you know, jeggings and just a top or something. You know, it's, it's, it actually it looks better. So just mm. think of things that way as well. I think that's um, that's really important. Um, here's an example. In fact, I'll, I'll jump from two places. This is the town of Amalfi in the Amalfi Coast, taken in the daytime. I found this viewpoint while driving to Amalfi and suddenly realised that this was a potential for a shoot later on. And if I show you this one, that's the shot that I took later on. So I came back to this viewpoint when it was low light, again, that wonderful dusk vibe. Mm. And uh, it all came together um, really, really well. Stitch panorama again. I've got a lot more time to think about the shot. But if you look at the sort of like the shot I took in the daytime, it has relatively equal merits, except the format is different. It's three by two. And the other one was obviously taking a lot more of the scene when I'd actually sat and worked it out. Both of these images got processed. Both of these images were used. But the end result is, is that one has a lot more activity. It's got boats and, uh, you know, people coming in and out the harbours, people on the seawall. And then, of course, when you go to the other one, you can see there that um, it's got a much more evocative feel because of the colours yeah. and the time of day and the lighting situation again as well. So this was me coming out later on my own in the car, back to that viewpoint, and I took this shot without Rachel that time. Mm. The, um, uh, here's another one that uh, is a good example of being on holiday and taking photographs in a, in a very um, quick way. This is um, 
uh, taken on the side of the road. This is a hand-stitched panorama. So in other words, I just literally held the camera like so, click, 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 click. And what I've gone and done is I've timed the last shot so there's a car coming towards me in the bottom right corner here. And that really makes it really add something, um, you know, a, a little bit different about, about the picture rather than it just being about the, uh, the town and the mountain that you can see behind. Mm -hmm. So it does all sorts of different things. And I think it looks better with that area on the right hand side. And you can see where I'm standing um, uh, to get this particular shot. So often I will, uh, you know, just quickly take images as fast as I can. Uh, when I'm wandering around and if I and your brain starts to learn to tune into these sorts of things as you're doing this more regularly that you can sort of you know you'll create these more evocative photographs that are more that are well planned out as you approach the scene because you're used to doing this and you'll take you a bit of time when you start the holiday maybe over you know a day or so to start to really tune into everything mm. and you can also see from the processing of this that it's really saturated blue skies lovely green trees or the terracotta again things like that it, it works together really well so um those sorts of things are, are, are really great um don't forget to get classics uh i found this immaculate fiat 500 oh, really beautifully restored uh down an alleyway one day now look i haven't gone right up to it and stood right next to it while taking photographs that's not going to work step way back from it, use a longer lens, and you can isolate it from its background. I mean, it's not much of a background, but you can see repeating doors, for example. But it becomes all about the car and mm. uh, its bubbliness in that sense, uh, the way that it's built. Mm. So um, I really recommend, you know, think about the classics when you're away. You know, what is it that wh where you are? What are the classic things that you that mean Italy or mean Croatia or similar? So mm. um, that's a really good piece of advice. Let me show you, for example, some stuff from Japan. This was taken in uh, Roppongi, which is uh, one of the sort of like districts right in the center. I'd seen this. I, this was part of my hit list. I visited the tower in the daytime, and then I came back and visited it at night and took shots from the top of the tower across the city as well. So it was a dual visit for this place in the end. You know, um, did I do this on my own? Was my wife back at the hotel? No, absolutely not. She really did want to obviously see what the city looked like from a high viewpoint taken mm. in, at night time. So we went there at dusk and I found this gigantic sort of like spider sculpture, which was outside the entrance, which I thought worked really well and tried to do something artistic with it all that came together well um, using a tripod. I bought the tripod with me that time. That's a really good point. I just want to mention, I don't wander around with loads of clobber. I've got a tripod. That's, uh, that I'll keep back at the hotel. I'll return back late afternoon, pick it up, and then I'm only carrying it for part of the day. Yeah, good idea. Um, this was taken outside Tower Records in, in oh, right in central great. Tokyo. Yeah. And I was just hanging around outside. I had this wonderful idea that I'd get someone walking past. Little did I know that a guy in a pink T-shirt would walk oh, past yeah, brilliant. a pink advert. But I love the uh, fact that her eyes are mesmerizing and they're also sharp. And I kept thinking, I can't have the, the people walking past sharp. So I used a longer shutter speed. I used a bigger aperture, like a F16. And I just managed to get a little bit of motion blur as they went past. I had one go at it. That was it. No, but it's brilliant. Because <laughs> I couldn't get the guy with a pink t-shirt to come by again. <laughs> it works really well. Yeah. Um, here is the, uh, um, the, you know, the density of the metropolis of, uh, of, of uh, Shinjuku in Tokyo. Uh, shot from a bridge a lot further back and compressed together using uh, a longer focal length. Now, this is sort of famous, uh, it's like quite cliche photography for Japan, showing its intensity of population. But at the same time, it, it works really well. But look what I've done. I've waited until a train has gone by. And then the train is slightly blurry because I've used, a, again, a slower shutter speed to get all of this. Mm. So, um, you know, a, I, I had this idea in my mind. I'd seen this sort of shot in Shinjuku and I just found a, a viewpoint that worked at the time. But notice it's just done in the daytime. So again, nothing uh, particularly crazy. Um, but I'd been on my way down to photograph um, the crossings in Shinjuku because these were always really fun to do. But you can see what happened here. I had the shot lined up and 
somebody walked straight into the frame and then another load of people walked into the frame and stood there waiting for the crossing to go green. And then when mm. they walked off, this was all in the middle of a 30 second exposure. <laughs> so it looks like they're all ghosts and see through. It was, um, it was really quite fun to do, mm, Lovely. but the uh, composition took a little bit of fiddling around. because I tried to get this wonderful tower block in this gap here and the lovely curve of this crossing going around like this, the lights on this crossing really made it. So, um, mm. yeah, Go out with ideas and react spontaneously. So if someone walks into your shot, just try it. And then they walk off. It might make a blurry mess, but it might, as it did in this case, create something a bit more memorable, which was um, really quite fun. Mm. So um, I would just, I'll, I'll show you a few highlights to close that I thought were really great, that, uh, that, that were um, particularly good. Um, I, went to, I went to Madeira and in Madeira, we had some pretty horrible weather. I went there in January. It was February half term, rather. I went there. And um, when we got there, you know, it's supposed to be sort of about 20 degrees in, in Madeira that time of year, often very nice weather over the winter months. It wasn't that great. And one of the things I did was go for the worst weather. I went to a place called the uh, Fanal Forest, which is really famous, and got up there and took all of these photographs um, in infrared, actually, of uh, this oh, weird, nice. spooky forest. So sometimes when the weather doesn't work out, you can actually use that to your advantage. Mm. And uh, I managed to take the quite memorable sort of trees of these, um, uh, memorable shots of these unusual trees. Um, Laura Silva trees, they're called, uh, up in this particular area. It is a bit of a landscape photography mecca to go there and do this. But um, I got some uh, really good results, even though it was actually a lot of the time it was not only foggy but it was also raining mm. so um that was particularly good uh we went up into the mountains in these sorts of areas as you can see here and found things like waterfalls because they weren't particularly um you know light dependent so it was really good fun to sort of visit some of the waterfall regions up in Madeira as well and photograph those because a lot of the time we had some pretty gray skies and you go down to the beach and uh down to the coastline and it was it was all completely different. Um, and then let me show you um, some stuff from Paris, Montmartre, for example, which is uh, another really good one to have a look at. So I went up to Montmartre at night time in uh, the top end of Paris and uh, we went to a cafe and sat around. And I was sat sitting on some chairs opposite, actually, when I started to notice things, guy playing piano inside. So rather yeah. than photograph the guy playing piano, I sort of used the, the doorway to look as though you were invited in to an evening of jazz or something like that. I love the fact he's got his camel cigarettes on the uh, oh, yes, yeah, on yeah, the yes. uh, piano there, which is quite fun. Mm. But then outside, I managed to get this rather intimate conversation between these two French guys sitting outside it. You know, I got the sort of cocktail sign and various other bits in there. That's so nice. even when you think you're just relaxing, doing nothing, take your bag with you because you know, you've no idea what you're about to see. And in this situation, the really nice seats, the delightful colours, you know, the oranges, the blues, it all came together. The guy wearing the cap and wearing a scarf as well was just something that, you know, I observed and reacted to as, uh, as quickly as I could at the time. So, you know, OK, don't take all your clobber maybe if you're going out for an evening out, but maybe take a camera and one lens and stick that in your bag because you never know uh, exactly what you're going to get. And... Um, uh, just a few other little bits I thought I'd mention. Uh, uh, this was rain in Rome one afternoon. Uh, <laughs> amazing. The whole place flooded. It got a really torrential oh. downstorm, uh, downpour, rather, and a, a storm in the afternoon with lightning and a huge rainbow, which I photographed from another location. But when we got back to the Colosseum, this enormous puddle had appeared. And I I put the camera probably about, I don't know, five inches off the ground at the very most, something like that. And that's given me this opportunity to get a very unusual perspective on the uh, Colosseum, just taken in the middle of the day. And I came back and photographed that in the evening as well. This was better, it had the, had the nicer colours. And uh, talking of that particular day, uh, in the evening, I ran over to here, which was a famous view of the Ponte Vitario, which is the bridge going over um, the Tiber, I think it is, the river in the centre of um, the centre of Rome, looking towards the Vatican. I've been sitting in a coffee shop, and there was this window at the back of the shop suddenly going quite pink, and I kept thinking, what's happening out there? So I went outside, and oh, my Lord, and I ran out, got to this viewpoint, and photographed these um, scenes of uh, of the Vatican. They're just, yeah, you know, travel cliches, but they're nice travel cliches. 
because they've got decent colours and I was able to react as um, quickly as I could and run up the street. Um, uh, other things, low light photography, I thought I'd just mention. So there's the Vatican in low light. Uh, no, it doesn't seem to have anybody around. Go there in the daytime, thousands of people everywhere wandering around in this location. But if you go there either first thing in the morning or last thing at night, most people have cleared off and you've got a good opportunity of getting rid of uh, people from your picture and making something that's a bit more dynamic in this case. Mm. But this is a funny one because this is my wife clearing about 15 people off these steps. <laughs> she turned Brilliant. around and she said, oh, my husband's a professional photographer. I don't think I was at the time. I think I was, <laughs> I, I was a semi-professional. In other words, I think I'd sold a few things, but you know, I, I was hoping that I would be more professional than I was. And uh, we're at the uh, the Pantheon in in Rome, and she asked people, "Could we just mind moving for just like five minutes while he just takes this photograph?" And I got this shot yeah. without anyone in at about nine p.m. in the evening. But it looks is, like uh, four uh, in the really morning. unexpected. In fact, <laughs> it does, doesn't it? And there's a guy over here you can see sat on the side. But again, okay, if you ask people and ask people to help you or move or something like that, you'd be quite surprised. Everyone's like, "Oh yeah, okay, it's no problem." Mm -hmm. I. I you know, people are, are, are pretty cool if they know what mm. you're doing and they can see that you're trying to achieve something. So um, mm. it's just being rude that's uh, the main problem, I guess, when people travel. is You know, everyone now has got a bit ruder, I would say, than they have before. <laughs> um, and, I'll, and I'll end with this, which is, which is really fun. So this is just Santorini. This is a, a travel cliche. If you do it in the evening, it doesn't look anywhere near as nice as it does in the day with its fresh whites and beautiful mm. deep blues and uh, lovely colours. Uh, and it doesn't matter if it's quite hazy out to sea as well because it's, it's all about the, you know, the form of this bell tower and, mm. uh, and the dome coming together. It's a real travel cliche, but who cares? It doesn't really matter. That's lovely. But the, um, the main thing is, is that this is, a, this is the town of Ia, which is up in the north. And I photographed uh, that Santorini dome on the way here. And when I got up there, the sort of viewpoint looking back at the town, um, again, produces another Santorini cliche, but I produced something that I hadn't seen before, which is a, a stitch panorama going across the, uh, the scene. And, and what, what, what I'm, I, the point I want to raise is, is that the, uh, the uh, Ia is aimed for its sunsets, apparently. Oh, the, uh, you know, the, the, the beautiful sunsets that you get here. I don't, understand why they say they're beautiful sunsets it's probably no different from any other coastal <laughs> location in in that particular greek island but the uh, the main thing is is that when you go there it was lined with people everywhere all like waiting to see sunset and then as soon as sunset left the i don't know 500 people who'd come to to witness this incredible non-event which was just a yellow disc going into a load of gray humidity um cleared off and then that's when the really the magic happens and you can get this wonderful sort of dusky uh, lighting effects you can see where the sun set on the left hand side but what was really good was the bonus of moonrise on the right hand side as well mm. so that came together really well and then finally I'll, sh I'll tell you this funny story i found this set of steps on the side of a church and i thought this was quite wonderful uh, it needs a splash of colour. So I wandered back about five minutes to the cafe I'd been sat in and I'd noticed it had some terracotta geraniums sat outside. And I asked the guy if I could borrow a uh, geranium, um, <laughs> geranium pot. Brilliant. And uh, he, he quite weirdly looked at me and then said, well, as long as you bring it back. And I said, yeah, it won't be long. I said, I'll be like 10 minutes. And I put this pot on these steps and took this photo. It really came together well. And then um, Rachel sat on the steps and then a a small crowd of about five people had gathered behind me and they said oh can i would you take a photograph of my girlfriend so she sat on the steps and then somebody else's girlfriend and then a couple and before you knew it i was having to like fight the terracotta <laughs> pot off them to try and take it back it was it was really funny but it just shows you with a bit of innovation what um what you can actually do uh, mm -hmm. when you're traveling in other words if, if things come together and, you know, think, you, you think that something needs something, well, then try and work it so that mm. you can get it to uh, to add that bit of extra interest and, and extra enjoyment in there as well. <laughs> well, brilliant. Thank you, David. It's, uh, it's been great chatting with you. And um, look, we'll, we'll definitely be revisiting this. So um, everyone keep an eye out, so, you know, uh, pop over to the link somewhere in this video and you can subscribe to our newsletter and, and we'll be getting you know more content out with with david so you know looking forward to those conversations and um also looking forward to 
um, getting you into Cambridge at some point as well and, and, and running one or two workshops. So really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks very much and uh, we'll, we'll catch up soon. Brilliant. Thank you, Chris. Thanks to Campkins and yeah, see you all soon.